Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel and in a world full of combiners and movie verse figures and new waves, sometimes it's fun just to look at something a little different, a little quirky, like this odd kind of pink ugly plain thing. I don't know. I don't even know what you call this, but it's going to be our focus in the latest Got Pa True review. And I promise it does transform. I don't know if it should, but it does. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, aka Got Pa. As always, please like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe. Have some fun with us. Check me out everywhere. Have a look at Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, and Transformers Collectors NL. And we have this. And I'm saying this because I, I don't know if it's from a franchise. I got this off friend of the channel, Wayne, and I appreciate him letting me take a look at it. And there are things to like about it. Like, there's something kind of cool about this plane mode. We even have die casts on this. But at the, end of the, at the end of the day, it really sort of feels like somebody looked at this and said, making a transforming robot toy, that ain't so hard, I can do it. And like, they started to design it and, and got partway through. And then somebody like, you know, called out to him and said, hey, it's dinner time. And they went and had a sandwich and then forgot that they were drawing a design and just left it. And then like somebody picked it up and took it to a factory and said like, hey, why don't you make this? And this is what they came up with? It's like it's unfinished. You'll see what I mean when we head over to the table and try to take a closer look at this. And so here we are with the thing that, that kind of, I guess, sort of looks like a plane. You know, a Cybertronian plane, maybe? Kind of? Look, some of you think that GoBots are a travesty when it comes to, you know, the transforming robot genre? No, no, I personally, I love GoBots or Machine Robo, whatever you want to call it. But this, this thing is, it's, it's not good. Like, if your plan is to get this with the intention that it's going to be a good figure, then you're going to be really disappointed. But, like, if you're sort of just looking for something that looks okay on the shelf and is sort of niche, and like you know it's going to be bad, but like you're cool with it being bad? Well then this is probably up your alley. So paint apps, we can like mark that right away. I'm gonna say 10 because this isn't really a KO, I think it's its own original thing. And we do have complementary colors, I mean we have the two shades of pink and purple, I kind of wish that out here was also the same sort of light pink or in here was the, the dark sort of fuchsia color. But they're complementary colors, you can't, you know, it, it, it's a color scheme that makes sense, I guess. You know, it might be stereotypical where this is supposed to be a female, um, you know, it's probably stereotypical colors, but it's a color scheme that makes sense. So we'll say, we'll say 10, it's not really a KO, it's just not good. Like I said, it's as if somebody started the design and then didn't really finish it. Now we don't have a box or anything, but she does come with these instructions and they're kind of crummy. Uh, you know, it says seven steps, but th these aren't good. And it's sort of like they're torn off of a box or something. I don't know. These aren't, they're, you'll figure it out. Now, before I go any further, I want to thank friend of the channel, Wayne, for letting me take a look at this. I don't own it. He does. He got it as a version of not Slipstream. I can kind of dig it. I can see where he's coming from. Now, we've gotten a couple of mold reuses as that Decepticon character, and we'll kind of talk about that when we get her in robot mode. But, in looking at the plane, I feel like the, the kind of closest sort of comparison that we have would be this guy. This, of course, is Cyclonus, specifically the Combiner Wars Cyclonus. They both have the swept forward wings. They even have a kind of a complementary color scheme to each other. So, you know, I, I guess we'll call her She-Clonus. Cyclonus and She-Clonus. 
Well, what adventures they could have. Now, I looked at the Combiner War Cyclonus back in episode 33. Again, this is another one of those throwback sort of references. I've been doing a lot of those lately. And, I, I, look, again, I didn't know what I was doing at all. I, I barely know what I'm doing now. But, you know, like, here's Cyclonus. And here's She-Clonus. I, can I even show both of these in the same frame here? I'm trying to, you know, like, they kind of match all right, I guess. Sort of. So what about the articulation? Well, though this is starting off, I guess, technically strong with a 10, it's a fine, like, it's an okay plane. You know, in this mode, it's all right. I mean, it's solid. It does what a plane should do, I guess. It doesn't really... It has a front landing gear, but it doesn't really want to stay straight, but that might just be because I don't have the, like, the back section here as straight and flush as it possibly could be. We'll see more about the articulation and give a mark for that when we get to robot mode. <laughs> now we need to deal with the transformation and kind of, what a terrible train wreck that is. Okay, so on the good side, <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff that's pegged in here. We have a peg right there down into the, I guess, top section here. We have two pegs up here in the purple that go in under the kind of edge of the light pink. We have two more pegs down on this section of the purple to go into the lower section of the purple. So there's a lot of like tabs and whatnot holding it together. So how do we begin to convert this thing? Well, we will put that up. By the way, I'll say this, we have die cast and the plastic actually feels good. It's too bad that the design wasn't better. We begin really by kind of pulling out this stuff on the sides and loosening it all up. Loosening all of those pegs up. Some of them, like they'll kind of come apart on their own, but we get all of that open. Then we can make sure those legs are untapped. Then we can extend these back legs down and down. We can bring the toes forward and then the heel goes back. So like they sort of separate. We can sort of split the whole section open there. We can turn the legs around and turn the legs around and make sure that they're pushed down all the way to kind of tab in as best as they can anyway. Okay, then we angle that piece down, we push the wing all the way back, and now we've got room to get that piece out, which is going to be the arm. We do the same over here, we angle this down and put that wing up, and now we have room to get the, what will be the arm out. The actual plane here, you use this pink hinge in here and you don't flip it back, but you angle it back like that. And then you take this whole section and getting all of this junk out of the way, you rotate the whole thing around. Isn't that just wonderful? Now I'm gonna stand the robot up here and we'll kind of reorient things and finish the transformation off. It's not that we have a lot here to finish off, it's just, she does get kind of tall, I'll give her that. Uh, so here, we come underneath and we really rotate the fist out and rotate that whole section around. We come over here and we rotate the hand out and then we rotate the entire arm piece around and I, I guess you could like bring the arms down like that, I suppose. You open out the chest, actually maybe get those out of the way. You open out the chest and you pick up the head and you straighten up the little ear sections and you close the chest back up and you can even bring the shoulders down. I don't know if it makes much of a difference. Everything wants to knock into one another here. 
And at the end of the day, like boom, there's your robot mode, I guess. Okay, so granted, I've seen worse looking bots. I, I have, but that's not the whole story, man. Not even close. So, Wayne said that he had this as a version of not Slipstream. Well, one mold that was used as that character was a repaint of the Generations Windblade. And the Generations Windblade, despite her imperfections, is leaps and bounds better. Leaps and bounds. I looked at her in episode 178. By the way, I looked at the Titans Return version of Windblade in episode 294, also leaps and bounds better. But even when this was used as Slipstream, it is a far more convincing Slipstream than this transforming robot thing is. The other version of a mold that was used for Slipstream would be this one. This is the Dark Energon Starscream. This actually belongs to Starscream Girlfriend. And I looked at this in episode 299 again. It is leaps and bounds significantly better of a toy, of a figure, and of a representation of Slipstream. So, I'm going to stick with she -clonus. Okay, so the articulation for this awful monstrosity. You would like to think it's good, and it could have been good, if a few different decisions had been made along the way. First, we have a pretty big backpack, and this doesn't tab in. It really should. It just sort of falls away. The head, it can look down, it can look up. The ear things move. The head does not move left and right, or if it does, I cannot get it to, and I really don't want to kind of press my luck where this isn't mine. There are shoulders, they can go out and like all the way around. You know, they can face up. We have an elbow, but really it's just like a gorilla arm type of elbow. We can swivel at the wrist. I guess, the, I guess the, I guess the elbow can move this way, a bit of a bicep swivel. I think the elbow's on a ball joint, but here's the problem, and I don't know if you can see it, but I'm gonna try and show it here. Inside the arm, the upper arm is held on with a, a very tiny screw. So this whole shoulder pad thing is really just screwed onto the upper bicep. I think a ball joint up there would have helped so you could move the shoulder pad up and kind of have full range of motion in the arm. We also need a better way for the front of the body to really stay tabbed to the back of the body. There's no waist. Big shock. The legs. Um, they can go forward to there. They can go... Let's try and get this arm out of the way. Forward to there. They can go back to there. There's no thigh swivel, but we do have a below the knee swivel. So that's good. The toes can go forward and back. The heel can go forward and back. And the awesome knee uh, can bend about that much. That's it. And it's all because of how the thigh is molded. There's a lot of, I guess, thigh kibble back here that's keeping the knee from bending further. If that had been molded slightly differently, if we had a ball joint in the shoulder, maybe, maybe this thing could have been good. Even if we had a way to tab the cockpit section onto the backpack, it could have been good. But as it is, it's not. The articulation is... I don't know, like a Titan Master has smoother articulation or a Prime Master has smoother articulation than this thing. Before I forget, I need to point out this just terrible faceless face. I guess it's supposed to be a face plate. The two black little dots are supposed to be the eyes, but like that's it, that's all this thing has. It's not, it's just not good. So back to articulation. As I was saying, a Prime Master or a Titan Master has smoother movement than this, more ball joints, I think. This is the level of bad articulation quality, very similar to the Transformers Prime Air Arachnid, and that's just a, just a terrible toy. The paint apps, they were a, a 10. The transformation is 
four, five. It's not great. It's not that smooth. It's a bit of a nuisance. You're not rewarded with a great robot mode in the end. The articulation at minus five for the size that this is, I would expect articulation at least akin to as good as this guy, Cyclonus, and it's not even close. The overall score for this transforming robot thing, monstrosity, is like a three, maybe? She's just awful. But you know what, Cyclonus? He loves her anyway. And here we are once again, and I have her back in this plane mode. This, I don't know, not slipstream, maybe? Kinda, sorta? Maybe, maybe not. And I have her back in the play mode because it is the least offensive. I don't like the robot for so many reasons. And the thing is, like it had potential. Like the articulation in the legs could have been fantastic if it weren't for the wings being on the side of the legs. The arms, they even could have worked well, except the shoulder is kind of put into the shoulder covering with a screw. Maybe that should actually have been a hinge, even a ball hinge, so that you could angle up the shoulder pad and kind of have free motion of the arm or freer motion of the arm. And maybe should have been given a face instead of like, you know, two little dot eyes with a marker or whatever it was. Like maybe should have been given a face. I think that this is like... Like a, it, I don't know. I don't even want to call it like a Chinese knockoff. It's not. It, it's, it's, somebody put the effort into making this and designing it and hoped it would kind of catch on as, you know, something people would enjoy. But at the end of the day, it's just not good. There are things to like, but overall, it's not good. It's very, if you like kind of KOs, you know, you like niche things, you like just cool transforming robots, then like don't get this because it's none of those things. It is a pink and purple, two-tone pink, I will add, two-tone pink and purple plane that looks sort of sleek and like alien-ish, I guess with an awful robot so like you should get it and set it up as a plane and then like never change it and probably never handle it again it's not mine so I can't really break it but I kind of really want to you know anyway I appreciate Wayne for letting me take a look at it I really do it's fun to take a look at some of these different things and sometimes you happen upon a diamond in the rough this just isn't one of them. Let me know what you think about this little thing. Am I being too harsh on it? Am I being too harsh on it? Is it better than what I'm giving it credit for? As always, I appreciate you dropping by, giving me some of your extremely valuable time. And I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit right here inside the videos.